Mm, yes, everything looks okay. <clears throat> Hello, it's Jane. How are you? <gasps> How are you going? Right. I've got friends on their way down to do a day of art today, so I'm very excited about that. And I had a very exciting weekend. I'll probably tell you a little bit about that. I am um, while I chit chat about arts blouse, why not? I shall put my little sign away. And I've got my new unicorn paint pens now. When I did my last live stream, uh, we had a power outage. There was a big a transformer being put on a pole up the road. So now we won't have power outages next winter. There you go. <laughs> but the power cut and I disappeared as I knew I would. But I'm back. And uh, yes. Hey, Jenny. Hey, PJ Moore. How are you going? Right. Unicorns, white bane pens. Let's uh, have some fun. So what I've got here is an altered art journal. And uh, what that means is that it's an old book that I've uh, taken pages out of and put my own papers in. And it's a, it's a process. It's really, really fun. It's not that difficult. This is a book that I actually got in France on a trip there and uh, it was all very much dilapidated and falling apart. I've kept the original pages but old paper has a lot of cellulose in it and it breaks down over time. As more modern, uh, well as times progressed, that type of paper, the ingredients were changed in printing paper and papers don't fox like this with this sort of um, darkening of the edges uh, which I just adore but also they crumble and crack so old paper to create on especially in a journal that's moving is going to be problematic because it'll break and crack but there are things you can do but what I've done is taken those papers out because they're not actually that nice to create on they're a bit of work and I just wanted to put in here robust paper. A lot of this was, um, I pre-paint it when it's in bigger sheets or um, like from my uh, cut sheets that I've got. Oh, I'm just looking around for a set around me. And uh, yeah, this is just a different way of uh, working. And then I've got this, I take this book to um, travelling with me. So this book came to Italy with me uh, on a uh, an overseas trip quite a few years ago now. Oh my gosh, time for lies. And uh, yeah, just, I, I, I mean, as with a lot, not all of my journals, but some of them, I keep working on them because I don't finish them in that first, I don't work on them until they're finished. I work on them until something else comes along and then come back to it uh, at some other stage. So they sort of get this layering of whatever is going on in my life at the time. So this is life, uh, uh, urban sketching. This is uh, Monterosso, which is a little town in Italy. So this is a um, got plunging into the sea. And so this was a jelly plate print in the background with alcohol markers and goodness knows what else. And or maybe paint pens. I think it might be. It might be both. And then I've carved a little drawing. Here's a little town down here. I, this brings back such memories for me. But equally, I <laughs> concede that no one else may be able to decipher uh, what is happening. In fact, one of my friends that is coming this morning, she was actually on that trip this way. Okay, and then on this side I've got some of my die cuts. I think I went through this book a little bit um, the other day. But I have it with me at life drawing as well. I don't really have much life drawing in here, but it's for when I'm not in my other journal. And I just really like this journal to write things in. And it's a real mishmash of all sorts of stuff. But it feels already full because of all the colour and it's 
a, it's a really lovely space to create in. I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, art supplies I'm going to use, I think, uh, mainly white paint pens. And this is a process that I love to do, especially when I'm warming up. And just go through with one art supply and especially black and white or gold is another one, good one for this sort of thing. And just refine um, pages as I go. It's just a good little warm up and just re reconnect with what's going on on the page. Oh, I like how these two girls are overlapping actually. And over time how your eye changes and what you feel as, aesthet as aesthetically pleasing does change over time you know it becomes I don't know if more educated is the right word but more um, yeah you just well, we've got new processes new influences and they're happening all the time you learn new things all the time hopefully I, I really do want to keep learning so anyway I'm just reworking that nose and adding a little bit I'll just leave those girls as they are I might just so this is a little set of five new white paint pens and they've all got different tips and these two are double-ended so this is the duet musical marker that's a new tip this is the pinpoint paint pen tips an essential so it has to be in the set and this is a new one it's got a dotting tip oh which will be nice for here which just gives white dots, which are lovely for reflections in eyes and just for the purposes of dotting. But it also has this gorgeous brush tip. And there's two formulas. One's our No Shake uh, formula from the Paint Over Pens. <coughs> Excuse me. And the other is our Musical Marker formula, uh, which you shake up and it's very, very, very opaque. So I'm just going to reiterate some of these white lines uh, rather than just creating definition with black lines I love putting these white lines it sort of makes it look like a sticker to me and sort of cuts them out and it just further iterates that this isn't serious I'm just I'm playing around I'm sketching around in a journal it takes pressure off myself and you know if someone else is looking at it you can just enjoy it in its imperfection. I'm not trying to create something that's super realistic. She's blue, okay? <laughs> but beyond that, there are other clues. Like it's loose, It's you can see the brush marks, that sort of thing. So I'm just, it says, hey, I'm playing. I am playing. So this is the more opaque one. I probably should use the less opaque version oh and I've actually got a uh, different paint pen now I might use this little anyway let's let me have a little quick look for questions pages with the circular inky blobs oh that is alcohol ink I think on um, Yupo paper I, and I love the effect of alcohol ink it's really fun uh, you can work over it with paint pens a little bit um, and I've experimented with adding matte medium on it, but it's not, uh, this one's got matte medium over the top so that I can work uh, over it, but it cuts down on the glossiness and part of that magic of the paint pens. Oh, sorry, of the alcohol inks. So these were um, the Spanish ones, uh, Pebio. Pebio? something oh I might start with M like Morello so it's a really big range of alcohol inks and then I actually even sketched over the top of them after I added uh, matte medium because it's quite hard to work over the top of them because they're just so shiny you know but it, it's a beautiful effect isn't it and then I've I have taped them into my uh, this book this journal and uh, here is I'm spraying watercolor so my like my color library colors and then I've got stencils and all sorts of other watercolor techniques I think this is acrylic paint under here uh, 
and then uh, it's a matter of I'm wanting to add detail without um, but still stay in that sort of sketchy sort of zone again so that it's it's still uh, fun it's, I'm not it's it's still in that joyful playfulness is what I'm it's a reaction to something not a description of what's exactly in my imagination or in front of me it doesn't have to be literal it's I'm all I can do is capture my reaction to things the effect of it rather than the exactness of something <laughs> And in reworking something, I suppose you're reacting again to your reaction. So it's sort of like a cumulative effect of multiple reactions. <gasps> a chain reaction, if you will. Mm. So when I'm looking at this in the screen, her face looks like it's slanting that way. So I am going, uh, my whole philosophy is I just want to do stuff until it doesn't bother me. It's not about it being perfect or me trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. It's just I don't want to be bothered by things in general. Uh, anyway, how funny. So what I've been up to on the weekend, why you didn't really hear much from me, is I went with my sister to Melbourne to see Bethany Frankel, who is a real originally was on The Real Housewives. I think she was on The Apprentice as well with Martha Stewart. And um, she's sort of a mogul, amazing, very vibrant person who has um, a lot of, um, has done a lot of ph 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 philanthropy. Philanthropy, oh my gosh, I can't even say the word. But it's a, like really an amazing person. So she's taken her reality TV, um, not so much persona because it's her, but that, that fame and done all sorts of um, amazing things. And it was, uh, she was out in Australia and her daughter came out on stage the first time, she's very young. It was really, really cool. And to see that mother-daughter relationship, uh, it was awesome to be there with my sister. And we just had a ball and, you know, we were sharing our, our hotel room and, you know, when you're like, okay, I'm going to sleep now. And then the other person talks and then you're talking and we just couldn't, couldn't go to sleep. We just had too much to laugh about. And it's all just such silly stuff. It's cool having a sister, I must say. Um, and uh, yeah, just adore her. So it was just really, really fun. And... Um, yeah, and my dad is there and he is, oh, it's very sad. And I don't like to talk about my personal life too much because I know a lot of you watch art videos and watch art things because uplifting and we've all got our own issues. But I just wanted to say, I might even just turn my little face camera on just for a second, just to say... So my father has um, Alzheimer's and he's not, he can communicate but not directly with us. He doesn't really know us. I know that he likes me. I know that he kind of recognises that he likes us. He, you know, grabbed our hands. He was kissing our hands and we had a really, really, really lovely visit. But he's in those advanced stages and it's really, I mean, it's really horrible. But the importance of... Um, we just have to accept some things and the importance of art and keeping up with your creativity because through that and, and life, I know I stopped going to life drawing and it was the first thing I cut off as soon as I started getting really super busy with books and my art supplies and all of these things and it should have been the last thing I cut off because it is a coping mechanism. And I just am mentioning this so that if you are going through something major in your life, don't cut off the most important thing. The easiest thing is to do something you do just for yourself, which is probably your art. Really mind.
monitor that behaviour and try not to let that happen. Really, really try and keep those important things for yourself because they are your coping mechanisms. That's why you started doing it in the first place. And then when stress or emotional stress, life really takes hold, and even if you don't have something dire in your actual personal life that you're coping with, just life in general is pretty intense uh, in the media and so forth. Really try and keep the things that are so important to you as a creative person, really try to keep them to heart and, and try not to allow them to slip away. Really hold on to it. I'm going to really make sure that I don't let that happen again. And because I do art all the time, but a lot of the art that I do is for my work. I'll, I'll get back to art in a minute, but it's just really, really important to um, keep hold of that in whatever way that you can, even if it's reduced to nothing. Oh, I, I did a book called Happy Hour, a, a couple of books. And the whole idea with that is even getting a few minutes to colour in, to add colour, to draw. Even if you were under super, super stress, my belief is that even if you just added those times up and it added up to an hour over a week, just even if you um, could get to that, that that would still help. And that's why I've got this little timesheet in the front to really help you to get at least that happy hour. Better if you get it all in one go and you do it every day because we're arty people and that's what we like to do. But that was the premise of that. And then sometimes I forget my own advice. And uh, anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm just really going to be more mindful and really watch that. And I'm just saying to you how important it is to do your art. Anyway, I will... <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> yes, uh, it's all about anxiety. I think anxiety is so much of what drives me. And I hate feeling anxious, so I do all sorts of things to avoid feeling anxious because it's so disturbing. It disturbs my sleep, it wakes me up, it stops me from getting back to sleep, it just you know gives me a stomach ache, it makes me eat too much, it makes me not eat uh, you know enough, you know, and then you end up eating, da, 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 just you know gives me a stomach ache, you know, it just affects you in all sorts of ways, and sometimes you don't even know that that's what the driver is. It just feels like overwhelm and that you don't like or you're reacting to something that's totally different that's in front of you. You know, people like just pop off and you have to think, I know they're not actually um, reacting to me or this situation. They're reacting to a greater situation. And really what we should do is just hand people a piece of paper and a, a cut some colourful pens and say, hey, yeah. <laughs> play with that for a bit, you'll feel better. Maybe that's what doctors should have. <laughs> Aside from medical solutions or surgical solutions, just, you know, try a little bit of, just do some colours, just do, just do this, just, you know, get some little art plans, just do this. <laughs> or just, just, you know, stare at some watercolours for a little. Oh, I might use these. Just, you know, give your little eyes a little bit of, mm, pick your soul back up, remind yourself who you are. This is just my philosophy, and I'm waxing lyrical. Um, but yes, I I know it's the truth, at least for myself, and for an awful lot of people, because I talk to lots and lots of people. And art is just one of the things we can do to help feel like ourselves, keep feeling like ourselves. And whatever that art form is changes for different people, you know. Might be cooking or See, that's not even something you do for yourself. It is creative. But that, and that's what a hobby is. A hobby is doing something for the sake of it, for your benefit only, really. That is what a hobby is. And I consider what I'm doing this and my life drawing, that, that is my hobby. It aids in my profession, of course, uh, but... I also consider my live streams, <laughs> my live streams a hobby, um, my hobby, yeah. I mean, they aid in my 
works on creating art and showing you things, but yeah, it's just a very important part of life. Um, oh, Miss Lulie says she's quite an extraordinary amateur, I think, talking about Bethany. She started as a chef in Martha Stewart's show competition. They went to the first in the Real Housewives of New York, and she was hilarious in Real Housewives. Hilarious. Um, I found her hilarious. And, uh, but she went through, oh, just personal dramas and it just became too awful, too toxic for her to remain on uh, that show. But she, she's done other shows. She did a show called The Big Shot and where she was trying to find an assistant. It was really interesting. It was good. She's so real. Like She really tells people. It seems a little, for me, it seems quite brutal. Like there's honesty and then there's kind of a brutal honesty. But... You know, she doesn't pull punches and she's not trying to be rude or hurt for us, the important thing. But sometimes honesty is just... Well, one perce people perceive different things as honesty, I guess, is another thing and there are cultural differences as well. Hmm. Anyway, I'm just going to keep just playing around with this and just... Oh, I love this down here, delivering your lines. And let's deliver the lines. What should we draw? Just interested to see how this goes on this very shiny, it's almost like glass-like surface. Yeah, so even this is, well, it's still delivering, it's delivering my lines. But yes, and then there was a, we did a meet and greet afterwards, like because we had got the VIP tickets, of course. And, ooh, oh, okay, so I can scratch those right off. Mm, yeah, no, this is not something I would do often. Like, have this as a background, even though it looks very beautiful. Do you know what? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> There's an alternative to this. I've, I have this as a paper in my paper collection. Mm hmm Yes, yes, yes. Does this work on it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's going to... Ah, that's what that happened and then that trust transferred over there. Mm, okay. And then I have this page here. I must have quickly drawn this, I don't know when, and I just always scurry past the page because I don't like... I didn't like the image. So I'm going to... So I've just <sighs> covered up that face for the moment. Well, why don't I cover her completely up and just let her start again? So she's not wearing a black mask. She's going to be darker. And let's just give myself another creative opportunity entirely. And on this side, I've put uh, matte medium on the this plastic kind of paper. On a journey you can't control, absolutely. <laughs> so we'll just keep working this. And in fact, I might continue this dark colour after. I wonder if layer cake will be a quicker solution. Just please hold. the matte medium is it I think so um, I'm just going to see if this this is why I love to create on my own papers because I don't have to I can just get on with whatever idea I don't have to worry about experimenting with does the art supply will it support that idea can I just keep going can I just keep moving well, maybe I can bring that. So then I've got this and then I'm going to bring that behind her 
as well so that she's on a journey she can't control but she's on the journey and that's the important part you're on the journey and you're staying on that journey you're moving forward or moving and then this this journey whatever this is is part of what's happening and then I'll uh, work on building this as we go that looks like it's drying that's fine because I'm on, I've got the matte medium there see I've got a bit of tape there oh well the lay cake's sticking there sometimes but the edges are creeping back we'll just see uh, I'll let that be a bit rougher. If it didn't work out, I could try um, acrylic. It's just this is one step less, I guess. I don't have to it. Boop, hit the thing. Not a really big deal. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to keep going because I don't like that white being there. I like, I want this all to be a darker colour. But I might, um, she's got this text here, which I do quite like. So I might start changing the colour a little. She's on a journey she can't control. And I've got a beautiful colour in here that I can control. So I'm going to nab a little bit of this. This and this, let's just see. Oh, this is now going to be very um, uh, taking it in a different direction. I think I'm being guided by what I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, just like with my dad, with on that kind of uh, you know, with a parent's health journey that you have no, they have no control over. No one has any control over. It is what it is, and it's. Uh, the journey is, at least the person on the journey isn't aware of it. That's the only compensation in this case. Um, at least they are comfortable and seem relatively happy. Oh, I'm just going to check that that wasn't a, um, my friend's. That's all good. Huh. On a journey you can't control. So there's no point, you can't say, well, I'm not going on that journey with, you know, a loved one. You're on the journey. What You know, that is, it is what it is. Anyway, I'm just, because this is an art journal, it, you know, they reflect what you're going through. And I used to write about things and actually journal my experiences in my initial journals. There's way more of that. But over time, I think I've just become more adept at... I don't need to write it out. I mean, it's, it's coming out anyway. And writing it... Um, I, uh, for me, I'm self-editing, whereas with art, I'm not. I'm not editing it. Um, it's we'll see what happens, and um, mm, I'm just going to have a quick look at comments just to see. I know this isn't very uh, attractive, but I think there's just something wants to come out, so I'm just letting this happen and uh, move. Ink is ruthless. <laughs> Um, oh, Carusa the Dreamer says she's getting some very anime inspired looks from this picture. Oh, God. Hey, Kerry, how are you going? Um, oh, Miss Lulu says many health insurance companies in the USA cover therapeutic art classes. Oh, I wonder if that's the same here. Because it would just stave off so many issues also because you're in a I imagine because you're in a 
creative, open environment where people are, where you are sharing parts of yourself with your art, you also can see that other people are going through, if not the exact same thing, they're going through things. And it's really good to be reminded that we can go through things and we can get through things. And we don't have to be um, trying to be perfect. It's just totally fine to, it's normal to try and figure your way through these things. Now I've just dragged that through that drying layer cake and because we're on such a non-absorbent thing, I'm picking up a lot of the, it's still working, but um, I just want to clean that off. Just make sure even more that I do. But the other thing I do is rather than, you know, wasting ink on that, I could add as I'm cleaning off, as long as I'm on an acrylic background or something that's not going to jump back on my pen again, uh, I could clean it off by <laughs> working on the page itself. <clears throat> I can try and uh, just sort of cover up where that black, cross transferred over. Let's just see what happens next here. Oh, I might add my, a brush with fame. Um, oh yeah, that's right. She did that flip show. I love the guy that she was on that with. Oh, was she on Shark Tank? Oh, she'd be good. Oh, she'd be ruthless on that. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> oh, Sovereign Knight says she would like to be prescribed art uh, supplies. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I bet it's a... Um, it would be of benefit to uh, people. It'd stave off a lot of self-harming things, you know, like things, other choices that you can make because you're not, not that I'm saying that's what you're doing, but things, and it can be harming as in you've just dropped the things that are important to you, the things that have always kept you balanced. You start to think they're not important because you're devaluing yourself. That's what can happen when we are in a distressed state, you, uh, de you, it's very easy to devalue what it is that we're going through because it's just so hard to deal with things. It really, as a human being, it's hard being in your own brain, isn't it, at times? So dropping those important safety, those things that keep us contained, um, isn't, doesn't serve us in the long run. Even if we think we don't have the time, we probably need to make sure we keep those. Anyway, these are just my thoughts for the day. Just making that clear. These tippy toes, these are another paint pen as well. So is this me not, or this person, not disappearing into despair or is this going to be a darker skinned person I just need to maybe make that decision because if it's not that things have to be literal but if it's me then that has a different um Thing, or do I need to define it? I don't. Maybe I don't really need to define it. <clears throat> on a journey you can't control. I'm on a journey I can't control. I feel like I'm on a journey I can't control right now with my my pens and my markers. But I must say, this is already more interesting and more. It's sort of yeah, it's interesting. Where are we going? I'm just going to let that keep evolving. But it's already more interesting than it was before. Because that paint's a little bit wet though, I'm just going to pop a little truss the mess sheet down there so I don't get more coming over here. A distillation of marks. I must say, something I find very, very difficult to do is just leave text unadorned. Uh, it's almost impossible for me to do that. Do you know Angus said he would um, get some croissants because you know, I've got my guests and I, I got part about a third of my brain is thinking of croissants I'm so sorry 
and they just popped into my mind. Um, but when I say leaving just the lines without, like adding dots or adding double lines or flourishes something to the text, I just I find it really quite hard, unless it's super, super messy, like this, like really handwritten. I can cope with that not being, or this, that suits it. Ink is ruthless. It doesn't really suit her because she doesn't look ruthless. So, well, look, it has been ruthless, you know. It's, Maybe like something like this, um, I could, I think I use an airbrush for this, I could drop some ink right down over her face and it sort of goes to this, like ink is ruthless, life is kind of ruthless, like life, you know, just some little ideas that are playing around, this is a distillation of marks, this is a drawing of a, someone leaping at the London Bridge. <laughs> Leaping in London. Oh, on the embankment there. This is, um, and I drew this from a photo I wasn't there when I was drawing that. But this I was sitting at a cafe in Italy at a winery. Very pleasant evening. Looking out over the fields, little bridges in amongst these things. All the vines of the winery were here, little houses, little crookedy roads. Uh, lemons need the bees, someone must have said that at some point. And this has got chalk and crazy eyes. Now I know that that's very hard to tell what that is and without me saying what it is, who would ever even know. But I'm just whooshed back into this beautiful sunsetty time. But this is a perfect uh, uh, image for just for adding maybe a little bit more work too, as I feel like it. Just every time I come past it, I might add a little bit. Um, see these sort of little feathers. Oh, if I just so this one here. This is the you have to have this. I'm sorry. If you're a white paint pen person, a paint pen, but this you have to have. Um, so this lid, you've got to shake this time. You can hear the rollerball in there. So you take that off and the first time you use it, you need to prime it to get the ink to come down. You don't obviously jab it and kill it. It's got a special cap that you insert it like that and I don't want to do it too much because it'll release too much ink. But if you do need to um, get a little bit more ink up there, just, you just repeat that process. And then I've got these gorgeous thick and thin lines that you just can't get with anything other than a brush tip or an actual brush. I just love how with an art journal you can go from one page which is I think something quite dark and interesting is resolving itself in my mind here. It's got something to do with my trip to see my father and my emotion around that um, which I really try and keep a cap on because I, I don't want to cry when I'm with him. I want to enjoy you know, the funny moments and whatever moments I can. Do you know what I mean? Like, but eventually that emotion, it's got to go somewhere. I mean, you're feeling it, whether it comes out your eyes or not. You know, it's got to go somewhere, doesn't it? So maybe it's, it, I'm, I'm helping it come out in a healthy way here. That's what my my I suspect is happening and I think that is very related so I'll just let that cook and evolve I don't need to push anything I'm not in a rush these things just reveal themselves sometimes you're just drawing pretty pictures and that's perfectly fine as well there's no it's your art it's your art journal that's the whole idea of it oh this pen I'm dying um, of joy uh, now I can see where something's happened here and my, um, I need to re-attach this into the journal but it's okay for now, it's okay for now. 
Just have a quick look at comments again. Make sure I'm not um, missing questions. Um, But PJ Moore says, a third of my brain is always thinking about croissants. <laughs> yes, well, it's a worthy pursuit, is it not? <laughs> Probably a coping mechanism, though, isn't it? Yes, but so delicious. Sometimes we can just enjoy them for the sake of them, right? Here she is on her Las Vegas lounge, the lounge lizard. I think this was from a prompt lounging in Las Vegas. Oh, I that. Yeah, that's wrong. This is, a, because I'm doing my life drawing, um, it's informing my work. I'm going through a little bit of a private, personal, mini renaissance of my artwork, I feel like, and I'm sort of heading up to some sort of pivot, which happens in my life from time to time. It's not going to be a major one where I moved, like the last time that I really had a major one, I moved from photography to painting, and where painting had, and drawing had been my hobby, it turned into my, I really had a massive pivot in my creative life, in my work life, I guess you would say, actually. Professional life. But I've got, I've got a little, just a little private art pivot coming up. I was talking about a, a, a wonderful friend's 50th birthday. And um, yeah, I was talking about it with um, some friends and just, you know, how that, that it's sort of discombobulating, you know, there's sort of a change bubbling, but it's just interesting to see what happens. I'm, I'm at that point where it, it doesn't create anxiety for me. It creates like a, ooh, what's happening? What's going on? Ooh, and because I've been through it before. And uh, I'm just in that. Um, and I know my life drawing what's happening with my dad probably, um, you know, all that just life sort of stuff is probably all feeding into it. How could it not? But, yeah, I don't know where, where, where we're going with it. Uh, so I'm just letting the process, so, and I'm using my drawing, my art to really let that process Evolve. I think this is a layer cake under here, and I've got watercolour way, way underneath. Oh, I love this girl here. <gasps> How cute is her face? I just, I just want to add, the, her head is too big for her body, blah, blah, blah. But that can happen. So I'm just, I love this girl so much that I... I've got some gold and whatnot on here. So she has more realistic proportions in terms of her head. I don't want to completely outline. Her, look how thin her legs are and how small this body is. So should I try and not let it annoy me and try and lift it all? Or should I just let her be a, a whimsical creature? It's, I can change things. I'll just leave the, I'll just change things and just leave the changes visible. I might just move things down. Why not? It's my journal, I can do what I like. I just give her bigger undies, that's all. I can change this proportion of her hand as well. Give her a bit more of a BBL. And then if I wanted to lessen these lines, if they're really a bit too much, I can always 
come back over with layer cake and just push them back a little bit more. Because, yes, what we are, I'm just keeping in my mind, it's a, a response to responses. <laughs> and I need just to draw two ladies at the beach while my, I assess other things, whatever else is going on. So in any of my art journals, there's going to be a mixture of swatches and there might be a bit of urban sketching and then we've got a bit of maybe I was even showing people twisting the body here like using the heart technique or something then we're going this might even be from a stencil or I can't even remember but this face is very long which is fine but I it's disturbing me so I'm going to just I'm just going to change lines and if she's got a, two lines there she's got two lines but I can distract your eye away from it by adding that line there and then adding this white next to it so in with photography I had a little one of the little tricks was wherever I had pure black I try and make sure there was some pure white next to it because we've got those with the contrast and things. So it just always just seemed to bring better balance because these things work in unison. They don't have to be in equal amounts. They just need to, they need each other to bring volume. Oh, maybe she could be a geisha with her hair like this. I'm going to Japan. Might even give her not such an extended neck just by bringing her shoulder here rather than that being her neck down into here, uh, which is very exaggerated. Even this is a very exaggerated neck. Um, just trying to bring more joy to myself as I go through this journal, which has certainly become one of my favourites because I keep coming back to it and working on it. So why not? I can even lift her mouth up a little bit going this way. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use a little bit of paint pen. Paint pens are fantastic because they block in. So I'm also I'm using them to create lines, but I'm also using them to raise things and push back and lift and do all sorts of little tricks. Is this acrylic or black? I've got chalk here, I know. I can feel that. So my message for today is <laughs> white pen, paint pens are brilliant and um, just keep up, keep doing your art and never make excuses for such things. Now I'm going to really give this a proper clean. If that, I'm just going to quickly check. Um, oh, I like her so much more. I really do now. Wait a minute. Where is my little um, pastels? Where did I put them? I've got these little ones. I wonder if this will just be the... So this is a little um, pastel set. It's a cream pastels and it actually does come with a little applicator like an eyeshadow thing but I'm just using that on my finger and it's just a soft way of adding uh, pigment. And you can, this is from one of my original collections 
and you can still find these on my website. They're worth, even if you don't think you would use such a strange little contraption, the little tin for watercolours, once you finish with them, is just so cool. Uh, and it came with a little set of journal tattoos and these. There was also a set of powdered ones. It was like little tiny eyeshadows. But we'd sat that sold out of those a long time ago. But I always had more of these. They're just, oh, one of my favourite little things. Just pull them out, use them. Um, but yes, you can only get those. They were a Michaels exclusive. Michaels and my store, because I always have things in my store. Just need them for myself. Well, I'm really um, quite enjoying myself. Sometimes it's nice to let things work out with your art. Sometimes it's nice to just have that escape. And what you might not even realise is you are working things out. You just don't even know it. Um, it's just, it's happening regardless of your intentions. <laughs> Oh, that's better. Yes, I want to go that way. I just want to add a little bit of light. I wonder if this is the right tool. That's too bright. So this is actually a, another scene from Italy. Uh, at another little vi fishing village. So this is the ocean and I'm sitting up on another headland looking down at all the little houses and the little bridge and so forth. Yeah, so I've lifted her mouth up, given her a little bit more chin, so her proportions are a little bit more, just slightly realistic. We're still not in the real realms of reality, but oh, I don't know if I want to be in the realms of reality, to be honest. Deliberately unstructure the world. Oh, it's a bit an anarchy, isn't it? In terms of drawing. Well, in your drawing, you can deliberately unstructure what you're looking at, can't you? Abundance, it's all about shapes, luxurious, celebrating, playfulness. Oh, that's what, um, how my work was described to me. So I write, just, I like to write little things down. She's playing the piano here. I'm on that you post us. Oh no, maybe that's reacting to that. Um, it might have oil marker there or something. Let's just let that eye look around at things. This is uh, a transfer. I think it's a YouTube video. I recorded it um, of a uh, banner that I got in Mexico for, on a trip. Uh, to do a workshop about Frida Kahlo. I love Mexico and I love Frida. Um, yeah, so, oh, I need a finer white dot. I need my little white dot. Uh, my new dot will be too big for that, but she needs a little bit of light in the eye. It makes such a difference. Incredible. Okay. Oh yes, yeah, scuba diving. Right. But see, look at I've got all of this. The pages have already been started. It's all quite random, and obviously, you know, just reactions to whatever's been happening. Um, I can leave this very uh, stylized if I want to, or I can try and add a little bit of something else. Probably not. I think it's better if she stays. Um, stylized as long as it doesn't annoy me 
this is all a bit rough and that does annoy me it's not thoughtful uh, yet and because it's a Frida Kahlo-ish inspiration I really uh, like to honor her with my thoughtfulness um, but she sort of evolved into a little bit of a symbol there but that's I don't think that's my intention so I'm going to I'm going to keep working on this maybe not now but over time keep playing until I'm more satisfied I don't love this colorful page is starting to be a little bit of a illustration here architectural intimacy and then in my journals I've got so urban sketching I've got life drawing I've got collaging all sorts of different things and then when I'm doing live streams I'm showing you things so this could have been from a lesson I'm pretty sure this is from a live stream so you know I'm talking about things and teaching as I'm going I'm in the process of starting to do a little bit of work um, there uh, life is something happening and she's going through some life at the moment she's still a queen <sighs> <laughs> Still a queen, queen of everything. Um, okay. I'm just having a quick look at questions. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to uh, go off and just check on what's happening because I heard a disturbance in the force outside. Might mean my guests are here. And uh, I will very gladly see you people <laughs> later in the week. And just make sure you do your art, please. It's very, very important because you are important. And what you contribute in your life to the people around you is you might not even realise how important it is. And in order for you to feel balanced and all of that sort of thing, you need to do your... Art. But you might not have any problem with that. And you're feeling fully inspired all the time and that's just not an issue. Um, but for a lot of people, you know, just getting that time, making that time uh, is great. And it doesn't matter how much time it is. Any time's better than none. And she now has turquoise eyebrows and um, she needs to look happier about it because... Uh, I would be. I would if I had turquoise eyebrows. Um, why does she look angry or concerned about the turquoise eyebrows? She's not sure yet. I'll just. I'm going to lighten her eye a little bit, make her a bit happier. Things are serious in the world, but look, you've got rainbow eyes eyeshadow and see now she just looks a bit serious not angry about it right um she's determined to take on life not angry at the cards that have been dealt and that's a different feeling because one's a feeling of weakness and passivity that you have no choices and the other one is hopeful and looking up and uh, feeling hopeful about things and we don't I, I, uh, things uh, it feels like we've almost been trying to make life feel like it's a little bit hopeless and it's not it really isn't and it's up to us artists to continue to feel that and lead the way and we don't have to lead the way in showing our art as hopeful but we stay hopeful because we are in tune with our higher selves in tune with that creative muse or however you want to think of it and uh, we, we, we provide that balance to so many people in our lives don't you think 
Not that that's our job or our duty, but it's just because we are creative people, we are very often that is the way that people feel about us. You know, when they're struggling, they look to us because we're usually happy because we're doing art. So we must make sure we do it. It's very important. There's your prescription from the day, for the day. Not that I've doc I'm a doctor, not that I've played one on TV. Not that I've <laughs> got any qualifications other than art supply addict. Oh, I'm very fastly becoming very loving this drawing. <laughs> oh, yes, now she's happy. And then I need to decide, do I, so I'll define her hand a little bit at some point, like how much more definition. She's, there's some sort of cloud, there's some sort of castle happening here. There's rainbows, there's petals blowing out, there's bubbles of rainbow happening here. She's got the rainbow over her eyes. She might be a little bit Iris, the goddess of uh, rainbows or fairy tales or something happening. We don't, I don't need to decipher exactly what it means. It doesn't have to mean anything. It just is reflecting a moment that I'm having with you guys. Mm, I know I get off the camera because I'm having so much fun. Okay. It's Dr. Ink with a bit of uh, plunder tattoo in ink in it. Just to give a little bit of sketchy definition. As they all keep saying it's not serious. It's This is not serious. This is not serious. Until I want to take it serious, you know. And then that's a um, different signal. I'm just signaling to myself. Okay, have a wonderful day. Everything I showed you is, of course, available at janedavenport.com. The new pens, the layer cakes, the everything that you've seen me using. Uh, in all of this and I hope you have a wonderful wonderful day thank you bye <laughs>